This is chapter 13. Me and Winn-Dixie got into a daily routine where we would leave the trailer early in the morning and get down to Gertrude's pets in time to hear Otis play his guitar music for the animals. Sometimes Sweetie Pie snuck in for the concert, too. She sat on the floor and wrapped her arms around Winn-Dixie and rocked him back and forth like he was a big teddy bear. And then when the music would over, was over, she would walk around trying to pick out which pet she wanted. But she always grew up, gave up and went home because the only thing she really wanted was a dog. After she was gone, I would sweep and clean up and even arrange some of Otis's shelves because he did not have an eye for arranging things. And I did. And when I was done, Otis would write down my time in a notebook that he had marked on the outside. One red leather collar, one red leather leash. And the whole time. He did not in any way ever act like a criminal. After working at Gertrude's Pets, me and Winn-Dixie would go over to the Herman W. Block Memorial Library and talk to Miss Franny Block and listen to her tell us a story. But my favorite place to be that summer was in Gloria Dump's yard. And I figured it was Winn-Dixie's favorite place to be too, because when we got up to the last block before her house, Winn-Dixie would break away from my bike and start to run for all he was worth, heading to Gloria Dump's backyard and his spoonful of peanut butter. Sometimes Dunlap and C.B. Dewberry would follow me. They would hollow. They would holler. There goes the preacher's daughter visiting the witch. She's not a witch, I told them. It made me mad the way they wouldn't listen to me and kept on believing whatever they wanted to believe about Gloria Dump. One time Stevie said to me, My mama says you shouldn't be spending all your time cooped up in that pet shop and at that library sitting around talking with old ladies. She says, You should get out in the fresh air and play with kids your own age. That's what my mama says. Oh, lay off her, Dunlap said to Stevie. Then he turned to me. He don't mean it, he said. But I was already mad. I shouted at Stevie. I said, I don't care what your mama says. She's not my mama, so she can't tell me what to do. I'm going to tell my mama you said that, shouted Stevie, and she'll tell your daddy, and he'll shame you in front of the whole church. And that pet shop man is retarded. He was in jail. I wonder if your daddy knows that. Otis is not retarded, I said, and my daddy knows he was in jail. That was a lie, but I didn't care. And you go ahead and tell on me if you want, you big, bald-headed baby. I swear, it about wore me out yelling at Dunlap and Stevie Dewberry every day. By the time I got to Gloria Dump's yard, I felt like a soldier who had been fighting a hard battle. Gloria would make me a peanut butter sandwich straight off, and then she would pour me a cup of coffee with half coffee and half milk, and that would refresh me. Why don't you play with them boys, Gloria asked me. Because they're ignorant, I told her. They still think you're a witch. It doesn't matter how many times I tell them you're not. I think they're just trying to make friends with you in a roundabout way, Gloria said. I don't want to be their friend, I said. Wouldn't it be fun having them two boys for friends? I'd rather talk to you, I said. They're stupid and mean and they're boys. Gloria would shake her head and sigh. And then she would ask me what was going on in the world. And did I have any stories to tell her? And I always did.